You staying home tonight? I hadn't planned on it, no. Plan on it. Minus five, four, three, two, one. Booster ignition and liftoff of Discovery. You're gonna die. I'm Raymond Arroyo. We'll see you next time. Don't be clapping, we're on. Are we on? Hi, are we on? We're on! Welcome to the show, everyone. We're back. We're back on the show with Eric and Will, who have been on the show before, both yeah, of you. But with Gabby. Where is Gabby? Where uh, is she? Gabby was here. She moved for... to Atlanta, unfortunately. Oh. That's true. Um, yes. But Eric and Will, thanks for coming on. You guys are part of Novum. Yeah. Novum fill in the blank, right? There's Novum Real Estate, Novum Collective, right. Novum Music, <clears throat> Novum... Yeah. <laughs> So what's what's so there is like a <laughs> there's some news right coming out of Novum, right? The tomorrow is this the timeshare condos or sure yeah, <laughs> it's different no different. But you guys are you guys are releasing an album? No, we're we're going to record it. Oh, you're going to record an Recording, album yeah. under a new Novum Music, right? Or yeah. Novum yeah Novum yeah. Music yeah. And Novum Music is you just you do yeah yeah okay okay just called Novum. And That's then there's our, our label is Novum Records. Our publishing company is Novum Publishing. Okay. Our worship collective is Novum Collective. Not Novum Worship. Not anymore. Okay. That mm-hmm. was us, and now okay. we're just Novum Music. Eric, right. how do you feel about all these different Novums? Well, <laughs> you know. Our show today is brought to you by <laughs> Patreon.com slash the show. That's where you can go support us on, right, Corey? Right? We, yeah. yeah, you can go support us on Patreon. Uh, also, though, today... We are brought to you by, well, I mean, they just sent us Zelly Beans Coffee, which who know? you said you know Jonathan or you no. know? J- yeah, we both. Joseph. Joseph. Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, I know a Jonathan. <laughs> All right. So, that's so you guys know Joseph, the owner yeah. of? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So he's such us, a great guy. He's from Sugarland. Yeah. That's awesome. So Same time. they're also supporting uh, the show today. We're going to try his, um, he sent us, I've never seen these, these little steepable. So this is coffee. It's like tea. That you steep, but it's coffee. Oh, that's incredible. So we're going to try it. I know it's 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> we're just going to get one taste. That's okay. Wait, do we have other cups? <laughs> uh, no, I'll do it in one cup, and then I'll just pour it into a little... We'll figure it out. Okay. Is this is this going? Yeah, so once that's done, then we'll do that. Okay. Uh, also, the show is brought to you by stuff, random stuff that people send us in the mail. So you can send us... The studio address <laughs> is in. The, will be in the description. But you can send us... But people have been sending us... Someone sent me this. God we trust. In God we trust. Yep. It's a sweater. But no one put a name on it, so What's, I have no clue. It's just that. I don't know how to search <laughs> sweat, <laughs> sweater any, that says in God we trust. Was like, there anything know. on the tag? Nothing. Or? Nothing. Nothing. Wow. And these and two other shirts came with it. Um, one with some like weird icons on it that I can't decipher. But then other than that, I don't know. So I have no clue. I also got, and I told you this before, I got a really random sticker. It <laughs> said if I was doing it for the money, I would be a effing lawyer. Macklemore. Yeah. And that's it. There's no name of who <laughs> sent this. There's no backstory. It's just that so sticker. I want to give attribution. Is it from answer. Macklemore? It might be. That'd be cool. <laughs> that would be awesome. What's the weirdest thing you... What's the weirdest thing you... That is very loud. That is yeah. way louder than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's boiling water. What's the weirdest <laughs> thing you guys have ever received in the mail or sent in the mail? Did you ever do the weird Stanley thing? What is that? That's weird so Stanley loud. Thing. Uh, Flat Stanley. You guys know Flat Stanley. Oh, Flat Stanley. Flat Stanley. Yeah. So weird Stanley. Yeah, weird. That's a different thing. Well, I um, would make it Weird Stanley. And I I'd turn him into Weird Stanley. I don't think I've gotten anything weird in the mail. Um, I've heard of people, like, slapping stamps on potatoes and, like, writing a letter on the, like, fruit or potatoes, putting postage on it, and just, you can do that, apparently. Really? You yeah. can just send a, yeah. a produce through the mail? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, one so of my it's buddies, nice, yeah. yeah. One of my buddies is uh, when he was training for the Navy, he had like no social media or nothing. And this was back when I was using Snapchat. So I like the Snapchats that I had saved, I just printed on pieces of paper and sent them to him. <laughs> oh wow. Just, so, so, so he, you, he knew because I would, I mean, I, if he, you know, if he had sat, if he had Snapchat, he would have received them on his phone. But here they are. Wow. That's hilarious. That sounds like you were talking about the Amish earlier. Yeah. That sounds like something the Amish would do. Because oh. they, they can't use technology. Yeah, I guess snail mail would be their social media. Yeah. But how would they take a picture? They'd have to just draw it. Oh, yeah. That's tr- Oh, yeah, that's true. No, yeah, no technology. But some some Amish, though, do use... The old-timey. 
kind of. Yeah, because there's some that will use cameras. like they can use tools, like if it can power tools or something, like something necessary. So it's like a mechanical. Yeah. Well, no, camera. like they 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 can use electricity if it's necessary for like a, a trade. Oh. So they won't use it in their home, but they'll use it like if it's necessary to. For like wood sh- woodwork or something. Oh, uh, that makes well, sense. that's that's so. good. That's convenient. Because well, I know the refrigerators aren't. I forgot what it was because we visited um, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Hmm. Oh, and um, there's a lot of Amish out there. Mennonites and Amish. What's the I don't know the difference between a Mennonite. I think Mennonites get to use electricity. I don't. <laughs> Do you remember? Uh, not any. Uh, not. Oh. Eric, what would your cult? What would be the rules of your cult if you started one? Would you allow? Mm. Would you allow polygamy? <laughs> no, I don't think so. You no. gotta be careful because your girlfriend's here. So fiance. fiance. Oh, sorry, fiance. Fiance. So you no, could, I, that would be weird. If I don't you think said. so. Well, <laughs> well, bottom just. I think I would have. <laughs> I mean, I would have more fun things. I, I will say, if I ran for president, my only platform is that we would have a nap time around three. PM. Uh, just a some, national, a national, a national nap some countries time. do that, right? Yeah, and Same. I think America needs that. Honestly. How long do you let a coffee steeper steep? Two minutes. Oh, yeah, probably says on the pad. <laughs> yeah, for tea, it's about a minute and a half to two minutes, depending on how dark of a roast you want. Yeah. But is it longer for coffee? I've never had coffee. I don't know. Okay, so this says place filler in cup and gradually pour hot water, dunk for 15 seconds. or Oh, 15 seconds. 15 seconds. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's short. Oh, yeah, yeah, by the time... Uh, that's very short. I don't know where I'm going to put timer? this. I just... We well, guess we here, can just here, count. Put it on the... Ten, put on mine. Nine. Put on the plate. Eight. Get some seven, coffee flavor on my okay. cheesecake. Five, four, three, two, one. Are you two. ready? We're going to taste this. I'm not going to taste it. I'll taste it. I oh, that's right, because I, I don't drink coffee. Oh, okay. I do. But do we, we, we need we'll a separate cup, though. I don't care. No, yeah. Just drink this side. I'll drink okay. this okay. side. Separate sides. Oh, it looks so hot. It looks very hot. Maybe you should wait. Yeah, we'll wait. Okay, we'll wait. Here, put it over by me where this AC is. Like, that is um, so quick, my body though. That's not cool. If I was like, if I needed to get some Well, if you're quick, on a trip and you want to make sure to have your, I mean, you just put it in your back pocket, take it on the airplane, and then all you need mm-hmm. is hot water. Yeah. You don't need a steeper. You don't need. Or like for camping or something. Oh, yeah, that's nice true. Too. That yeah. would be nice as wow. well. Or for podcasts. Podcasts. So what is this record that you're going to go? Tell, tell, me, tell me about that. Tell us about that. This is your opportunity to talk about. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, um. So we started, well, so Eric came to me one day and he's like, oh, I have this cool idea for like a song and an album. And he had seen this color chromatic wheel, you know, like the color wheel you'd see on the wall of your elementary school Mm -hmm. telling you all the colors. And, you know, he was, he was presenting this of like, dude, how cool is it that like, you know, God sees like everything all at once, like a, like a color wheel. Right. And we as humans can get stuck in a certain color, a certain phase or certain whatever. Um, But then also, coincidentally, musically, there's a chromatic scale. Mm -hmm. So he was like, dude, let's create this album called uh, Chromatic, kind of talking about the colors, but also like, um, you know, musicality. It's yeah. So are you part of the you're part of the collective, too, though? Yeah. Yeah. So what made you guys decided to do the duo? Yeah. So I think. um yeah, I think one of the things that our hope is, is that with a collective, we and what we've been doing is we're making music for the church. Uh, we're making music for corporal worship. We're um, basically our hope and our intent is to create art that allows people to converse uh, in, with God in prayer. Um, so that's that's kind of the mission of the collective. One of the things that, like, I felt like we were lacking because when we started this back in 2013, um, our hope was we were our, our inspiration was the new evangelization. Novum mm. is Latin for new, mm. um, and so that was something that we wanted to see within the church. But um, I think if we're really thinking about evangelization, one of the things that we want to do is get outside of the church. So yeah. how do we do that? We create art that starts conversations with people who aren't already in mm. the church. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and that music has to be suited for um, that demographic, right? Yeah. And it's so, got to be good music, too. And it, yeah. it should be good. It, I mean, either way, yeah. you know, but... Um, and so we, 
we wanted to challenge ourselves. And then we also wanted to kind of like look at ourselves as Christians and say, are we having those conversations or are we ourselves kind of in an echo chamber where we're just like, yeah, like this is, you know, this is our, our lingo, our people, and we're very comfortable. Are we challenging ourselves just as humans and Christians? And are we allowing ourselves to actually get outside of the walls of the church to yeah. share something that really is important to us? So yeah, that's, that was kind of the, the goal, why we have so many, Novum, you know, right? <laughs> yeah, because yeah, so. we did start off as Novum worship or whatever, and, um, you know, we still wanted to keep the, the worship side of everything alive, and so, you know, the collective just made sense because Novum originally started kind of as a pseudo-collective or whatever, like when we were doing worship stuff, but then me and Eric kind of just fell into our own of like, oh, we really, you know, dig the alternative rock, mute math style or whatever, and, yeah. um, and so we started kind of diving into that, and... Um, and really just, yeah, started writing this record. It's about five years ago when he, the idea that he, you know, with the color wheel, he came to me. Yeah. Um, so we've been working on these songs for a while, but. Um, but you guys have known each other for a long time. Almost 10 years. Yeah. 10 years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Does that surreal. ever get weird? Go, oh, go follow. So, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you've known your family your whole life. Does that, does that, <laughs> is that a weird thing to know somebody for a long time? Yeah. I don't know. It's, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, if you want to get weird with us, we now we ourselves get really weird. Yeah, we have, we started a, a Instagram, so yeah, we, we have a a fake Instagram called Will and Eric. So oh, that's yeah. where we get super weird. I yeah, think, I think you guys know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know. I want to know. No, so. it just gets weird being friends for a long time, right? Oh. Do you ever get on each other's nerves? No. I don't. I don't. <laughs> well, that probably means that I get on Will's nerves because the person who doesn't know there's tension is probably the one causing it, mm. right? No, so. we d I mean, yeah. who doesn't yeah. get on each other's nerves? You probably yeah. get on your wife's nerves. No, never. My wife never gets on really? my nerves, Will. Oh, you said me getting on her. Yeah, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, I get on her nerves. Yeah. yeah, a lot. Yeah. yeah, I get on her no, nerves. No, I don't. Yeah. I mean, we lived, yeah, we let's lived try together. The coffee. Yeah, we lived together for like a year. <laughs> we, <laughs> I'd like to dodge this conversation. <laughs> we shared a bedroom. It's so, late. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, late. It's it been is. a while. We do need some it's coffee. Been a while. I'm not. That's still boiling. Is hot. it still really yeah. hot? You can yeah, go for it. Can throw some ice in there. So what? Some. What I love about uh, talking to Jonathan Joseph, Joseph. Joseph. Jeremy, you can is, that, is that is that um, Joseph? Yeah. Everything's ethically sourced. This bag, I think you could put in the compost, and it's gonna yeah. it's biodegradable. Uh, you could probably eat it, and is all about families helping families in terms of. I mean, he's looking after. He's looking for smaller um, family-owned farms to source the coffee beans from. Mm -hmm. uh, he's from Houston, Texas. So that's great, and it says right there, "Roasted with love." Look at that. It's also yeah. super delicious. Is it really? I haven't oh, tried it. Yeah, me and my wife. Any, yeah. uh, me and my wife. That's all we really. Drink. Them. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Oh, I think. Yeah. Did you have this at your wedding? You have, that was Justin. Justin. Okay, okay. Justin, Justin had it. And he's just, Justin. Yeah, he's just like the nicest guy as well. Like, he's he's just a really good guy. Are you dying? Are you? It was, was just very hot. I, I told had to, you. I had, to, I had to take it at a high velocity there. Just to be clear, it's the heat, not the coffee. The coffee <laughs> smells fantastic. <laughs> mm, boiling water. Just, just wait. You could just, you could just it's good. <laughs> it's very hot, though. It's very hot. It is. I'm going to wait. You, uh, in Europe... Because your your wife, my wife, who's off camera, she's from Europe. She is. But um, when we traveled to New Zealand, and I think this is a European thing, but instant coffee is a big deal. Mm. This is a big deal in Europe, right? Have yeah. you had, ever had instant coffee? So it's like it's yeah. like they somehow take, they freeze it. yeah, they take coffee and they make like an astronaut version. Like they freeze dry little. It's like the little sure. the ice cream that's the yeah. fro the dip and dot. Oh, we yeah. were thing. just talking about this. Yeah, the but other it's day. coffee, yeah. and all you do is add hot water to it, and then it becomes coffee. It's oh. amazing. But it has. Really, everyone knows it tastes disgusting. Yes, yeah, so it has a very particular taste. It's kind of like it's medicine. So I mean, but mm. then, but we traveled around a bunch of Airbnbs, and we started developing a taste for instant coffee. I mean, it was like, oh, okay, this is pretty good instant coffee. And so anyways, that was, that was my story. So, yeah. Well, so you guys are, uh, would you, you're considered, I thought I saw somewhere on Instagram, you guys talking about how close of friends you were. Yeah. You're like very close. You friends, have right? an Instagram. Yeah. yeah. For our friendship. Well, you have an Instagram for your friendship. <laughs> I was just saying that. <laughs> Will and Eric, are your significant others okay with that? As yeah. far as we know. Uh, yeah. I think we both knew when we married in that this is what we were marrying into. Oh, uh, okay. You're right. Yeah, yeah. You know each other. When did you first meet? 
2009. 2009. What was that like? Well, it was awesome. Yeah, it was. Well, because this is what happened is he was playing Adoration for this retreat, and me and my other buddy were like obsessed with this song called Came to My Rescue at the time, but no one really knew. It was a very obscure Hill song, and he played it, so we were like Mm. freaking out like, whoa, this guy knows his stuff, and he's really talented, and he has the best voice ever. And so um, so that was how he got me. Yeah. Take notes. Was there a lot of uninterrupted eye contact? No, huh? this is after. No, no, no. But then, and, but that was just that was our first interaction. Was like just us being like, dude, like we love that song. You're amazing. Yeah. He's like, thanks. And then he, and that was it. But then the year after, he actually was on the retreat um, for because he just came in for that one night. Mm. But then he was on the retreat. And my favorite story ever is we were playing. There was this like <laughs> tiny. This there was story. this very thin <laughs> hallway in this dorm that we were staying in. And um, and so, like, we were like, oh, we should play, like, hallway soccer and just, like, you know, two-on-two, two, bounce it off the walls, like, set up trash cans to as goals. And so we're just, like, being loud and obnoxious. And, um, and like, you know, 20 minutes in, he opens his door, and he's like, uh, hey, guys, I'm, like, trying to sleep. Is it cool if, like, you guys stop? And we're like, oh, my gosh, so sorry, dude. He's like, thanks. He's, like, closing the door. Closing it, closing it, almost shut. Just kidding. What are you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's very Eric. Yeah, yeah I was very Eric. wide awake and very bored and wanted to make some new friends. So. Yeah, <laughs> you like a silly time. I do. I do. Is that genetic? Probably. Yeah. My actually, my grandpa was a uh, clown for the Shriner Circus, and really? so That's crazy. he would do magic <laughs> tricks. And yeah, yeah, Dang. it was pretty awesome. It wow. was like a charitable organization and wow. whatever. So that's great. So I know that you guys are really close, and I actually wrote something for you guys. I actually you wrote, did? Yeah. Is it a song? No, it's a script, actually. Oh, what okay. the? Yeah, so I just <laughs> figured... Uh, I just figured we're all films of cinema. Pretty good. I, I didn't write it. I didn't write it. Anyways, we're this? fans of cinema. I figured since you guys are so close that you'd be really good at performing a script here. This is not good. Wait, is that page 55? Is, this is it the, the whole script? What wait, is this? Parks and Rec? Wait, wait. He's utterly Anchorman? vulnerable as he looks at her, searching her face <laughs> oh for clues. Gosh, what wait a minute. Okay, wait. <laughs> okay, wait, wait. Let me just get... No. 49, 50, 51, 50, 50. Why is it halfway through? Okay, so here's yours. Is this Shakespeare? So this is yours. Okay. I don't... Okay, 49, 50, 51... Have you talked to my agent about this? Because I don't know if legally I'm... No, this is great. This is really great. Did you? So here we go. Okay. And so I'll play, I'll, I'll do the, like, um, like the, what is it called where it describes? What, well, yeah, the narrator. I'll be the narrator, so it'll describe what's happening. And so this is from... Crucify him. Crucify him. No, no, no. 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 <laughs> no. So this is from... Barabbas. This is from a cl- <laughs> This is from a classic. This is from a literary, this is from a literary classic. <laughs> oh, my God. Is this... This is no Shakespeare? This, no. No, this is a really, this is like real literature. <laughs> This is from a thick fog. I'm not Bella. He's Bella. It's called Twilight. Oh, and so if, no. if you could read, if you could read Bella. Oh, no, I don't want to be Bella. You be Bella. It made everyone I talked to immediately I said Eric I would, should be I Bella. I guess I would be a better Bella just and listening Eric, to myself. Eric, if you could be Edward. <laughs> Eric, if you could be Edward. I could just, be Edward? I'm going to be mean, both? Sorry, will One you man be- show. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, Edward. Oh, so. Bella. <laughs> So will I already got could be, it. Is that can we can we call it? Is that good? Corey's already heard you do that before, though. We want a new. <laughs> so will you're gonna be Whatever. Edward? Um, we're gonna start at the bottom of the first page. Okay. And then we're gonna go to the second page, and uh, the first line is from Bella. First line. That's and I want to set. I want to set the scene. Do you here. want me to kind of get, get into my falsetto? I mean, how? Yes. So let me set the scene. So you guys are oh, out in like the I've... woods. This is a little bit into Maybe. Twilight, the first movie. There you go. I'm trying to get my eyebrows right. So you got so this scene is really important and it's a very serious scene. So you okay. guys are out in the woods and you're kind of like you're really having conflict about like who she's always cold. You're discovering <laughs> that you're discovering that Edward have you both seen the movie? I uh, maybe. Actually, so wait, which one is this? You're disco- this is the first Dawn? one. The first one. I've seen the first one. You're discovering New Moon? That, shut up. I'm sorry. <laughs> Damn it, dude. <laughs> Do you want me to act or not? <laughs> You're the worst actor ever. Okay. You're the most high maintenance. Not the. I'm sorry. Not the worst actor. Thank you. It's pretty so, good. okay. So <laughs> let me give you, I'm your director. So you're in the woods. 
kind of like having this conflict moment where finally you're like trying to. Yeah, I can't believe you're a director if you don't have glasses. You're on. trying. You're He's trying. The, you're trying to like really work through the fact that Will or Edward is a drac is a Dracula vampire guy. I've never yeah. seen this. So have you never seen it? No. Wow, the special effects are pretty okay. good for. Are the we time. ready? No. Let me just take a drink first. Break a leg. Speed marker. Okay. Rolling. And Eric, you got to come in. You got to come in hard. Wait, why? Wait, wait. Wait, do you want the falsetto no, or no? The, you said. Oh, you, you said put the, it on. Okay, because yeah. I'm going to start here. Yeah, because you're reading okay. that. We're, you're not, reading. we're not doing that. Okay. Right is this from the movie or the book? Right, here we go. This is from the movie. Looks better. All right. <laughs> Exterior. Forest. Day. Bella stands amid the trees waiting. Then the sounds of the forest abruptly drop out. A predator is near. Edward appears behind her. She doesn't turn around. A beat. Bella. <laughs> Damn it, Eric. I can't. I can't you, th okay, this I won't say the name. This wasn't, wasn't in the movie. No, this is from the movie. Yeah, but you don't hear the, the narrator doesn't say beat. Oh, okay, yeah. I won't beat. say Bella. Okay, wait, wait. wait. Okay, here we go, like, here we go. Okay. Pause. Bella stands amidst the trees. Edward appears behind her. She doesn't turn around. You're impossibly fast and strong. Your skin is pale white, ice cold. Your eyes change colors. And sometimes you speak like you're from a different time. <laughs> you ne no, I turn face my face me. to okay, you. Fine, you're fine, already fine, fine, fine. You never eat... Sorry. <laughs> you never eat food or drink or come out in the sunlight. And you said no to the beach trip only after you heard where it was because of the treaty. This last registers with him. She steps closer to him. How old are you? 17. How long have you been? 70. <laughs> A long beat That's as you. we begin to circle them. He sees he can't hide anymore. Honesty is an enormous risk, but he has to take it. A while. She inhales. She knew, but it's still shocking. We circle them faster. I know what the cold ones are. What you are. Say it. <laughs> Wait, we can't. This is off we script, can't hear Will. It. We can't hear it. You gotta say it. Say somewhere. it. <laughs> say it loud. Say it. Does it even behind her? Dot, dot, dot. Vampire. They seem to hover in momentary stasis, him utterly exposed, her reality utterly rocked. Are you afraid? No. <laughs> And ask me the most basic question. Angrier. What do we eat? <laughs> you won't hurt me. You're different. <laughs> and also, when I say it, when I say it again, that means we need it. We need the line over again with just like more emotion. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I missed that note okay, there. Okay. For no, no, no. You go. Will. So start from the top. No, no, you you're good, you Edward. Edward. You think you know me? Yeah. Right. That's you. You think you know me again? You think you know me? Again. You think you know me? He glares at her. She holds her ground. <laughs> Suddenly, he takes her by the hand. Take, take him by the hand. She starts walking. Bella. Sorry. Where are we going? Up the mountain. Out of the cloud bank. You need to see what I really am. What I look like in the harsh light of the sun. No. The sunlight will kill you. Again. The sunlight will... No. The sunlight will kill you. No, do it again. No. No, more emotion. No. The sunlight will kill you. Edward. <laughs> Myth, you need to see the truth. Again. Myth, you need to see the truth. It was just like, a, give me a more, <laughs> like, you really want her to see inside of you. Myth, you need to see the truth. He pulls her, but she stumbles. Bella. Uh, Again. Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Slow down. No, no, no. The, 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 <laughs> there you go. Marker. If we can get a marker on that. Okay. Speed. Marker. Rolling. Suddenly, he's right next to her. Are you afraid? Come, come closer. Are you afraid? No. Again. No. Again. No. <laughs> Again. No. With more emotion. No. Like you're falling in love. No. <laughs> no. Does, is that how people fall in love? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. No. Edward, then come with me. Someplace where no one can protect you. 
What? Some some place where no one can okay, protect okay. That's yeah, yeah, terrible. Yeah. Let's, start, let's, yeah, start, yeah. let's start over. Let's start over. Okay. Then come with me someplace where no one can protect you, where I could do what I've wanted to do from the first moment I we met you. We still holding hands during this? Yeah, no. Mm-hmm. No. Their proximity is intense. Wait, wait, that's me. Their proximity is intense, riveting both of them. <clears throat> Bella. I'm not afraid. You should be. Again, but more aggressive. You more. should be. No, okay. that's the Perfect. very white. He abruptly and effortlessly, effortlessly scoops her up into his arms. Go ahead. Don't Don't actually do okay. that. Yeah, we would break stuff. Edward. Hold on. Again. Hold on. <laughs> oh my god. He then flings her onto his back and starts running. Exterior forest, running, day. As in the opening sequence, Edward races through the forest, dark trunks strobing past as he picks up speed faster and faster. Bella clings to his back as it seems he'll collide with the trees, but he avoids them with supernatural grace. It's frightening, nauseating, intoxicating. Edward. Are you afraid? No! Again. No! (laughs) Again, but like a girl. But she clings tighter, terrified. They climb in altitude, <laughs> higher and higher, above the, above the fog layer. Finally, up ahead, the forest edge fast approaches. The clearing is beyond. The sunlight's glow, white hot beyond the trees. They're about to emerge from the shadowy darkness, but suddenly, Bella finds herself sitting on the ground against a tree. All is silent. She's dizzy, tries to regain her equilibrium. Then she realizes she's alone. Edward? Where are you? She rises, then steps just beyond the fringe of the ferns into external, a meadow, continuous day, a perfect circle of swaying grass, wildflowers, and buttery sunlight. Here, a stream nearby. Bella looks around and finally sees Edward, his shirt open, standing Mm. nearby in the shade of some trees. He watches her cautiously, takes a step toward him. (laughs) Come on, Edmund, focus. Come on. More emotion. Again. Again. (laughs) But he holds up her hand. (laughs) She waits. Finally, he takes a deep breath and steps out of the shade. This is why we don't show ourselves in the sunlight. (laughs) As the sun hits him. You guys have to understand on the script, it's underlined this next line. It's like, as the sun hits him, Edward's skin literally sparkles. As if embedded with thousands of tiny diamonds, he is magnificent, shimmering like a statue carved from glittering crystal. Your wife wrote this, Will. He moves towards her. Edward. This is what I am. No, no, no. Like you like you love Eric. But he's got sparkly skin. Yeah, but come on. You're a vampire, man. You're a vampire, Will. This is what I am. He nears, clearly expecting her to recoil, but... You're... Beautiful. <laughs> he realizes that she's in awe. She reaches out to touch him. She, okay, I'll oh. try again. She reaches yeah. out to touch him, but he immediately backs into the shadows, his <sighs> skin normal again. Beautiful. I'm a killer, Bella. <laughs> this is the skin of a killer. His arm juts into a shaft of light, sparkling again. I don't believe that. Because you believe the lie, the camouflage. I'm the world's most dangerous predator. Everything about me invites you in. My voice, my face, even my smell. (laughs) As if I need any of that. (laughs) He's suddenly behind her, then in front of her, then by a tree. (laughs) What? (laughs) What? Oh my god. This is the stupidest script. No. You guys watch this movie? Yeah. I would. Oh my gosh. Okay, sorry. He's suddenly. Wait, where is it? He's no, suddenly behind by the tree. Her. Where is it? Oh my gosh. Behind in front of her, then by oh, the He's suddenly so beneath fast. her. I mean, behi- he's suddenly <laughs> behind her, then above her, then by a tree darting so fast we only see where he lands. Edward. Edward. <laughs> Wait, where? As Sorry, if. Right where? As if you could. I can't, oh, I can't believe people are As really if you could outrun me. As if you could fight me off. He abruptly rifts off his shirt, then throws it against limb. a tree trunk with explosive force. <laughs> Bella flinches, but holds her ground unshakable. I'm designed to kill. I don't care. I again, kill people. again. I don't care. I kill people. It doesn't matter. I wanted to kill you. I've never wanted a human's blood so much in my life. Ooh. I'm dangerous to you. I'm dangerous to you. I. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're still going. This is still. I trust you. Don't. I trust you, Edward. I'm 
here. And that's it. Okay. In there. Wow. Great job. Wow. That was, that was very disturbing. Thanks for making me do I that. I also kept laughing thinking of someone in their car somewhere who was like, this will, this is probably like a 10 minute or like a like a 30 second bit. <laughs> it was it was maybe a, a and then they're like listening to it and they're like, maybe like two minutes. That's a lot longer and then than it kept I wanted going. It to be. Oh, you guys are really good at that. Thanks. You too. Thanks, man. Have you directed before? No. Never. Wow, first production. Yeah, it was my first time. Wow. Yeah. That's very I feel like I was a little aggressive, but I feel like you deserved it. Well, because, yeah. yeah. We, so we need that. Yeah. I'm pretty good. Yeah. Oh, I so your that. wife made this. Oh yeah. And it's cheesecake. It's it's um no bake right no bake. Yeah. So um so Eric, when are you gonna propose? Since Corey, uh, since Corey left, she can't hear. I'm thinking of <laughs> January right of last Corey. year. No. <laughs> January sixth. They're already engaged. Yeah, oh. we we are. Oh, we, that's right. Oh. We got engaged. You said that already. Yeah. January sixth. Yeah. Oh man. In Rome, Italy, in wow. the Vatican, St. Joseph's. Do you guys altar. have a date yet? No, not yet. We're looking at May first. Oh wow. Peace of St. Joseph's that's worker. Great. So we'll see. COVID. So of all the Catholic musicians out there, if you had to rank them, who would be mm-hmm. at the end of the list, the bottom, like the worst? And talk close to the microphone. Mm. All of the Catholic musicians out there. Yeah, of all of them mm. that you know. Like, who would be the worst? Yeah, the mm-hmm. one that you don't want to listen to. I don't know if Sunseed is class or Catholic, but... Sunseed? Yeah, they wrote this song called Jesus is a Friend of Mine. And uh, <laughs> it's like the best worst, though. Like, it's the best worst case scenario. Yeah, I've heard that one. So. I don't know if the Ocean's Drummer was a Catholic. Oh, yeah, how to play a Catholic church, yeah. but maybe that. The Ocean's Drummer? How to play Ocean's on, drum, if you, on drums. If you YouTube that... You'll find a very earnest drummer on an electronic drum kit with two other people just doing their darndest to play Oceans. And really? uh, yeah, if you could, if you could imagine like Oceans meets like Def Leppard. Whoa. Uh, Wait, do you mean Oceans by John Butler Trio? No, no, that would be cool though. Hillsong. Oh, so do you guys? You know that song? Yeah, I do know that one. Mm-hmm. But I think of Oceans by John Butler Trio is really good. Have yeah. you heard that? Do you know John Butler Trio? I will. Oh, he's great. I don't. Is it, what's the hardest, like, what's been the journey recently? Because you guys are independent. Well, not, well, are you independent? I mean, you're, yeah. you're your yeah. own We're record indie. label. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's not like, I mean, you're not totally on your own. Because you are your own record label. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Well, we got our producer down south, Mason. Mm-hmm. Sound Machine Studio. So, I mean, he helps us out. I mean, and we, you know, we... We wrote the songs with a few buddies. So shout out to Stephen Joe Bear, Matt Lewis, and Greg Boudreaux. Yeah. Do you feel like it's easier to stand out now? Or do you feel like the ship has kind of sailed in terms of social media and like making a it, it feels to me often like there's so many Yeah. Like, see? There's yeah. so many. And there are so many. so many podcasts. There's so many Catholic people trying to start their speaking ministry. Which I think is fantastic. It's like, how do you stand out? Do you read a script from Twilight? Like, what do you right. do? I think, I think this, will be our, this will be our break right here. Right. Yeah. I mean, you really just got to do whatever it takes. And if that's reading a Twilight script at <laughs> 1115 at night and with a good buddy yelling at you yeah. to say the line again, you say the line again if that's what it takes. No. I, well, I think is is the... Uh, it just depends on what your goal is. If the goal is to make it, then yeah, I think it'll be difficult. I was just actually thinking about this the other day. It's like, well, I think it's more about just doing what you feel like you should. Mm. Like it's Mm. more about just like, we are musicians. We should make music, share our gift. It's, it's kind of a, you know, it's, it's a call and a commission to, to do that thing. And whether, you know, whether we succeed or not or make it or not, is kind of at this point, I think irrelevant. It's like we we're making things that we care about that we want to share with others, regardless yeah. of now it'd be great to share with more people. Yeah. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's it, with anything, if you can affect one person or if you can yeah. help one person or, you know, start one conversation that, you know, sets off a chain of events that are, that are good for the world. And yeah, by golly, let's do it. You know? So it's scary though. I mean, it's scary though to, jump out and go into oh. something full time. I yeah. mean, that, that can be scary. I mean, it's one thing to like do something 
on the side, you know, yeah. and it, it can be scary to, I, and you know, and I have friends that are starting as musicians and they're like, what do I do? What do I do with social media? Yeah. Who, should, who do I talk to? You know, do I try to approach a label? Do I, you know, and, and it can be kind of, it can be nerve wracking. And then if you go more than a year or two and all your relatives are like, so what do you do? <laughs> and you're like, I'm a musician. And you're like, so what do you really do? Yeah. yeah what do you re- like? So you play at Applebee's every Wednesday <laughs> yeah. like, that, like, how do you become mm-hmm. a real musician? You know? Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know if anyone listening is like wanting to know the answer to that question. Like the, the, the thing that I found when I was full-time musician for like three years was like, just diversifying, you know, Mm -hmm. um, like I work, I still do work at Prince of Peace in Plano. So I had that on Sundays. And then during the week I would either go somewhere in the country to play piano for someone, or I'd rent out my sound gear for a band, or I'd go DJ a wedding, Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, uh, get paid to kind of co-produce or just play like synth or keys on like someone's song, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, just kind of having those multiple like avenues of like, Hey, I'm, I'm in music, but whether I'm like behind the mixer or like behind, you know, some, some decks playing DJing a wedding or whatever. Um, it, it, yeah, it's, it's tough unless you're like Matt Marr living off of like royalties, you know, like, um, and, and so I don't know if people, if people want to go to a label, that's great. It's just, everything is, I don't know. It's just, there's so many avenues and it just really depends on what you want. If you want to be a big social media influencer, then, you know, spend time working on that. But I don't know, that doesn't necessarily, I mean, I guess it could give you gigs. I don't really know. I haven't been in the game in a while. I, yeah, I've, I think we've both done both and it ebbs and flows doing full time and doing part time. I think the important thing is that you're, that you're always doing it. I was reading a book. I can't remember who it's by. It's called real artists. Don't starve. And it talks about kind of that, like you, you have moments where you have patrons and fans that support what you're doing and fuel, they, they allow you to eat and have a place to live. Um, and then there's times where, you know, they're, they're saying, if you're just getting started off, um, be your own patron. You know, if, if you have to have a, a, a day job to support your passion, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. That's, that yeah. doesn't mean you failed. It means that you're going to succeed because you're not going to die. <clears throat> yeah. Right. You yeah. know, so I, I think that's, and you do that as well. I mean, this is, you know, yeah. this is something that is a passion of yours. Yeah. Right. And yeah, I've, there's a, a book by this guy, Sean West called the overlap technique or like the, or overlap or something. Mm-hmm. And he talks about how so many people, especially with all this opportunity on social media, people are, people are wondering, do I quit my day job to go, do my own thing. And he says, look, it's not about whether or not to quit, quit or like whether or not to do this full time or this full time, but he talks about the overlap. So like start in your full time thing that you're in right now and just take small bets to slowly overlap and just like, just see, take little tests, like, like work in your free time. Don't watch Netflix. Like just try it, just take little bets and try it. And if you do want to go that route, then like slowly over overlap, as opposed to just cutting ties. But I mean, some people, I do know some people though that need that, that need like the burn the bridges and the boats. And Mm -hmm. like, we're just, we're in it now and we have to make money and we, we have to survive somehow. Yeah. But I think for a lot of people, when they have that tension between the two, it's like, well, just take small bets, like take small little risks, take a little chance, like spend two hours a week, four hours a week, five hours a week, like, Mm -hmm. you know, working on your passion. And then, yeah, that's a much easier way to ease into it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh. oh, I mean, that's, that's basically my story is our first album ever back in 2014 was like basically funded because I did have a full-time job and I was like, Hey, let's do this thing. Yeah. You know? And then it, it wasn't until 2017, uh, the end of 2016 actually. So like, you know, two years later that, um, I was going to quit my job to, to take the plunge yeah. Um, because we were gaining some traction. I was like, I just, I have to do this. I'm going to, you know, I want to be fully alive and I'm going to be fully alive doing this. And, um, and I actually ended up getting laid off. So that was like a clear sign from the Lord. Um, But there was a lot of provision and a lot of trust that goes into that. And so, you know, if you're, if you are, again, if you're listening, like definitely do the overlap because I mean, I was doing music on the side for those two years after, you know, we did our project and then I was still working full time doing music and then, took the plunge and took the time, you know, I had the, because of the overlap, I had built up that, like those opportunities of like building different skills, like, like I said, like DJing or, you know, producing and blah, blah, blah. And so once, you know, 
once I was like, I'm I'm gonna quit, I'm gonna do this, God was like, Yeah, you are. I'm gonna, you know, make get you laid <laughs> off for you know, get that get yeah. it started earlier. Yeah, it was like yeah. two months earlier than I plan on quitting. And so it was a lot of clear signs. I mean, you know, and then doing music full time. Um, you know, we there I mean, I could go on for hours about different cool stories, but um, you know, I mean it led me to meeting my wife because me and Eric went to London to do some some gigs and um mm-hmm. and that's where I met Rebecca. Um, so there's a lot of provision that, but I'm not saying that you'll meet your wife if you quit your job. So don't do that. Yeah. If you quit your job, you'll meet your wife. <laughs> Edmund is saying that. Okay. Yeah, Edmund I can say that. that. But, um, yeah, no, but, but I mean, as of recently, yes, I've actually, <laughs> I've Praise act- him. I declare it, Lord. <laughs> I've actually gone back. So I'm overlapping again. So I'm back working full time at, uh, at a software company. Um, and so you got rid of your wife. <laughs> No, 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 (laughs) no, that's funny. No, um, no. So, but no, I'm, I'm I'm doing more music than I was when I was a full-time musician. Like we're, you know, so, um, so yeah, um, so yeah, that's when we go down to the studio, I'll be working during the day and then music during the evening. Yeah. There's no, there's no like right way to do it. Something that I've seen too, especially like with COVID you've got, like you see musicians doing online concerts. Um, I went to, uh, like Corey and I went to, in Chicago, we went to a, a Love Good House show. That's another Catholic organization that like supports good music. And they, they oh, had yeah, a, Jimmy Mitchell. Yeah, Jimmy yeah. Mitchell. Uh, Love Good Music. Yeah. So they, um, yeah, they, they did like a little small driving tour, e- even amidst the pandemic, right? Wow. And then there's some, there's some people that are like doing other things. A friend of ours, John Finch, is doing personal training on dude, the side. he's jacked. He is so jacked. Corey and man. I are totally going to take him up on that because yeah, we need dude. to because we dude. got our quarantine 15 going. Goals. But, oh, man. Yeah. So, um, so he's so, a musician and he'll work <clears throat> your muscles. Straight up. Dang. He's yeah. part of the Novum Collective. We should just, he, he should have yeah. like a music and muscles kind of brand. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'd oh, be pretty high. He definitely does. Oh, he own. already does. But yeah, there's no right answer. I mean, <laughs> it, you you do what you do what you need to do, um, and then past that, you you do what you love to, right? Like that's yeah, that's how it goes. So it, there's no right way to do it, and there's no yeah, there's no like shame in having a side hustle or a full time job to yeah. support what you love. What's, so, what were you gonna say? Oh, I was just gonna say uh, about social media. It's like you know, it's such a it's such a trap to just get you know, caught up in the measurement of like, oh, well, should I have more followers? Blah, blah, blah. And then the comparison, blah, blah, blah. So if you're an artist, you're already struggling with comparison. So yeah. just don't even, don't even worry about your followers. What's your take on how, you know, if you're independent, <clears throat> if you're independent, you could submit songs to, or you could publish songs to iTunes and SoundCloud yeah, and, so we do. and all these things like mm-hmm. every day, if you wanted to, yep. like, how, how do you, what I've always wondered, like what, especially in 2020, how to make that, how to make that decision. Like what if you want, yeah, there? if you wanted to, you could just start a SoundCloud account where you do a song a day and you spend one day writing it, recording it, producing it and releasing it. And how do you navigate that? Yeah. How do you navigate that? Well, I'm, in some ways it seems like the more content you put out, like in the 2020 right, mentality, it's like, right. if you want to make it on YouTube, put out two, three, four videos a week. Like, mm, yeah. um, and there's like more and more content and and the relevancy like being relevant like if you're putting out a song where you're talking about i mean kanye would do this all the time like there's all these sound bites or references and all these things are very like relevant yeah how how do you guys independently as musicians think about that we i mean this record we're doing has been written over the last five years so we're definitely not in a rush to do anything slow yeah we were very slow every five years well (laughs) yeah and I, i think it you know is it goes back to your goal right like is our goal to be the most popular, most famous band? Probably not. And that's okay. And so if that's the case, you know, is our goal to have the most songs or do we want to have songs that we're proud of? Mm -hmm. Probably songs that we're proud of. And, you know, do we want to have, do we want to make content that we like or do we want to just try to put out a video to stay on schedule, you know, and, and, or to appease other people. Right. We, we're making music we like, I mean, I don't really, I honestly don't care if, if not many people like it. I mean, yeah. we hope they do, but yeah, I'm absolutely. not. We're doing it for us. And is that scary right. though? You having a job and you trying to do it full time? Yeah. So does that get scary? Where you're like, "Will, dude, I got to eat. 
let's write a banger. And we got to release it in a <laughs> oh, week. Oh, we have plenty of bangers ready to well, go. Where you're like, right, we right. got to get this out now because I know <laughs> you got a full time job, but I got to eat. I mean, my well, wife likes gluten free crackers, and those are not cheap. Dude, oh, don't I know it? <laughs> right? No. Um, <laughs> Amen. Yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. Um, Love my wife. No, I mean, I think she's yeah. my first wife. Should should be as far as you know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't I'm know. just saying, she's my first wife. She is your first yeah. wife. Um, she's, he's not wrong. Uh, no, I mean, I, I think... Why right. is everyone laughing off camera? It's true. Ty, it's true. It's, she's my first it's wife. It's a strange thing to say, Edmund, and you know it. You're making everybody uncomfortable, and you like it. Um, it's fine. We'll it's just strange it. to be so exact, isn't it? It's yeah, a it little is. little weird. Yeah. Um, I don't know why. So... I was just thinking, I was going to say this is my first podcast, but it's not. It's not. You've been on multiple times. No, once. Twice? Twice. Okay, sure. Twice. Yeah, Yeah, twice. Uh, You were going to say something. I don't know. You were going to say something. You were asking us, oh, is it difficult for him to have a job and, like, me to be full time? Yeah, like, how do you navigate when when a song's ready or, like, let's get out more songs, you know? We got to get that... SoundCloud money or that uh, Spotify money, you know? Uh, There's no money. Let's get that juice. Yeah, Yeah, if you're... If you're... If you're... uh, My opinion, so... From what I've learned from doing music for like almost 15 years and being in and out of like projects and things like that and bands and whatever conversations, talking to people who are in the music business, live in Nashville, have done the, you know, ups and downs. If you're trying to, if you're trying to rely on just like, like record sales, that doesn't, that doesn't put food on the table anymore. It's live shows. Interesting. Right now we're in a pandemic, right? And so we could write as many bangers as we want and put them on iTunes and Spotify. And that's not going to, that's, that's going to give us, you know, one, what is it? One sixth of a cent per stream, yeah. which is going to give you, you know, at the end of the year, it's going to pay out. So you, you can't hold your breath for something like that. So in the meantime, it's like, well, it, you know, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't, that just wouldn't be a good yeah. strategy for a musician to, to, to be like, well, so like what what I'm doing is just trying to find other means, mm-hmm. right? To so is that is that um, <clears throat> I don't know if this is the right word. Not headlining, but like gigging with other, like playing guitar with other bands and stuff. Is that what you? you yeah, I mean I've done that before. I also played drums and bass. You and, play drums? Yeah, that was I my first know that. instrument was really drums. Good. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah okay. I love playing drums. So so I'll play you know I'll play drums and sing and play guitar. So it, like Will said, diversifying is is going to be the best key. Yeah. So so and that what that does is take pressure off of like that we don't have those yeah. conversations where yeah. I'm like Will can we blah 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 it it doesn't exist because it's like well that's kind of useless anyway. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, if, if an opportunity presents itself, we take it. We, we love to share our gifts, our music. Um, but I, I, it's, it's much more freeing just to have the perspective of we're doing this because we love it and we want to. Yeah. Right. And I want, I, I want to like maintain that as for as long as possible. Mm -hmm. So if that means making, you know, having another means of income or whatever else doing a side hustle, I think I think keeping the integrity of the the passion that you love is I mean that's priceless. So yeah, yeah. that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, and I mean you know in terms of like money, one way to make records is shameless plug is coming Patreon. Uh, well, we yeah, yeah no we're doing a crowdfund for our record so on Kickstarter on, where no, where on our drop, website drop the link novamusic.co or experiencechromatic.com ooh, album is called ooh. Chromatic so Experience Chromatic. yeah so yeah. you know would you can go there learn about the project and and be be a patron be a donor um, get your name in the record we'll have physical records if we get enough money we'll pr- we'll cut vinyls so that would be mm. that would be sweet so i got an audrey assad vinyl yeah right we saw that. Isn't that yeah. nice yeah i feel really fancy oh we that. actually have new uh, our christmas album that we did two years ago we're we're printing vinyls for it <gasps> so yeah white vinyls yes clear. yes yes yeah. wait be- clear well like transparent kind of cloudy white that's cool what's better than a christmas vinyl you know yeah it's just nothing the nothing no- this is, is better. the novum collective album. what is that the, is the christmas one. Yeah. Oh, nice yeah that the one with a lob yeah, yeah, he's on there. On that. Yeah, yeah. Great song. me and him wrote a wrote an original song for that album. Yeah, he's got a lot of problematic views. Mm. Yeah, what? He came on the podcast and said that <laughs> I don't even want to repeat it. It's on the podcast, but well, then repeat it. He came on the podcast and said something about <laughs> I can't even say it. He said something about rad trads oh. and like uh. and like genociding them or something. 
Ah, <laughs> yeah, he said. Oh no, he said something really weird. Wow, that's okay. between him and the Lord. Uh, yeah, I mean, not fix kosher. that in seminary formation. Yeah, that's between so. him and the Lord. Yeah. If you had to pick, if you had to pick one, if you had to pick one person who is who that all of us would know, like one famous Catholic person that all of us would know, to stay in a like you you were in quarantine mm-hmm. for fourteen days with, couldn't go anywhere. Had to stay in the house with that person. Who would mm-hmm. you pick? Eric Wilk. Is this like a aww? Crap! That didn't make that interesting That's at so all. Cute. That ruined that. That's cute. I mean, Is this who would be the I, worst? I hate the pers- word. Wait. I hate. Okay, the, who would the whole be the thing, worst the person? Famous Catholic. Are we doing well, say like, someone we all know? Someone we like? Are we doing like a dead or alive? Okay, famous Catholic. Uh, Catholic uh, Mark Wahlberg. Oh yeah, he's an openly Catholic man. He is. We're yeah. doing like dead or alive. I hang out with dead or alive. Yeah, dead or alive. Oh, so we can do like. Saints and stuff. Oh, yeah, saints? that'd be cool okay. too. Jesus Christ, Mary, Mother of God. Who would be the <laughs> worst? Who would be the worst person being quarantined with? Worst person? Yeah, like being who would quarantined? be like the who would be the hardest to? Mm, Oscar the Grouch from Sesame He's Street. He's not Catholic. He's oh. not Catholic. Oh, but you man. say you just said who would be like the worst person to quarantine know. with? I don't know. I'm trying <laughs> to make this Catholic. fun, but that I mean, I was gonna say. <laughs> Oh, who? <laughs> he's about to put our he's about to put our old roommate on blast. I mean, you said it into the oh. microphone. I don't even know who that is. No, uh, we love he Billy. Kn- he knows. He knows we love him. <laughs> we His were gonna start Billy. a fake Instagram about Billy's like Billy like leaving stuff around the house. Yeah. Oh, my leave, roommate's like, mess. Yeah, my gonna... roommate, my messy roommate, or something like yeah. that. It's like. Oh, dang. Socks and like candy wrappers just yeah. everywhere. He's yeah. Like, what <laughs> the hell? <laughs> oh, he's a good man, though. Oh, he's the best. No. Are you guys on Twitter Hard at all? Hard to go. I am. No. I'm you not. are? Yeah. How do you guys deal with social media right now? I can't. Like, no. I'm having to. Really, I'm I having mean, to check out. I'm having to check out completely. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to like. I've been checked out for a while. I'm letting Jesus take the wheel yeah, on my social media. That's I'm not fair. even logging. I mean, in I, I haven't it. done Snapchat in like three or four years. Um, Facebook, I'm like, I'm a ghost. Yeah, um, yeah. Instagram. I'm on Instagram pretty much. Instagram's pretty. I like that. Yeah, Instagram's pretty good. Now they yeah, have, probably now they're basically most. TikTok now with the reels. How do you feel about the TikTok ban? Mm. I'm glad Trump's gonna try to ban TikTok. Some people say it might be not constitutional for him to have. The right to right. remove tax. Okay, I'm a, I'm a nerd who follows a bunch of tech blogs, and okay. it's, it's a good thing to be banned. It's a good thing for yes. TikTok to be yeah. banned? Okay. Oh, yeah. I couldn't learn the dances, so it doesn't affect me. Yeah, well, we all kind of knew that. That's okay. Yeah. Well, how do you, why, why do you think TikTok, it's good to be banned? Um, well, essentially, you know, it's a Chinese-owned company. And China can be pretty sketchy about a lot of things. And so... About data? That's the thing, well, right? No, it's data? Okay, look. It's, so it's, it's, it's like... It's a back door into like the American psyche, basically, right? And so you think about like everyone, you know, talking about the election in 2016 and like how Russia interfered and blah, 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 Cambridge Analytica. They basically kind of manipulated, and it's proven there's a documentary on Netflix called The Great Hack, and they talk about this how, how they can like using all these data points can like, you know, target people and create ads and create whatever to basically manipulate them into mm-hmm. thinking whatever they want. And so you know, with China owning this, this, you know, this platform, they can essentially, you know, tweak the algorithm to promote content that they want to slowly almost mass manipulate and not like conspiracy, not, well, it's kind of conspiracy theory, but not like in a weird, like subliminal, like, you know, kill the prime minister of Malaysia kind yeah, of, you know, yeah. from Zoolander. Anyways. Um, <laughs> I got it. But, but like, I got it, Zoolander. Yeah. Yeah. He knows. But, but essentially like, so there's that, that angle of like, well, they can kind of create the narrative and the rhetoric of like what are the the youth and the, these generations and these people like viewing and seeing and what's being like boosted blah blah blah. But then also just like straight up privacy, like what data are they collecting? What are they selling to? The, what are because the Chinese government like because it's Chinese owned that that company has to if this if China says like hey we want like all this information there's no. Like thing, you know, yeah. Apple's nice because like they'll be like, "Hey, can you open this guy's iPhone?" Because blah blah blah, and they'll be like, "Nope, privacy." Yeah. But like, yeah. But like chi- you know, with if it's a Chinese-owned company, they have to abide by the rules. And so, if the Chinese government wants something, they're they'll gonna say, it. "Give it to me," and they yeah. have to give it to them. That's crazy. And so, yeah, there's just a bunch of risks in that. I mean, the like my buddy that's in the Navy was like, "Yeah, we're not allowed to have it." And yeah. Then India has already banned it. Yeah. So like, there's pretty good reasons, and probably more than we even know on the surface. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I, f- I came across a Reddit post where he was talking about like going deep into all the stuff that TikTok takes in terms of data. 
And this person was like, this is crazy. Like of any app out there, like the, the amount of data points. The other thing that's really fascinating is <clears throat> there's a company that I won't name, but there was someone I was talking to who they're using, um, I forget the term for it, but it's like data-based. He used to work with uh, politicians, but now they're working in a different sector and trying to help. Like they're trying to help churches and mm. it's like marriage-based. Anyway, so, um, but he was telling me, he said, you have enough consumer data that you can start becoming predictive. And he said, mm. <clears throat> this might be giving away what the company is, but he said there are certain actions that are um, statistically significant to predict that someone is either about to go through, going through, or has gone through um, a divorce. Whoa. Whoa. And so it was like it was like certain predictors, like getting a gym membership within a certain amount uh, of time, plus doing something else, plus some other yeah. behavior. And it was like wow. predictive consumer behavior yeah. in order to in order to kind of figure out what's going on in their life or what is about to go on. And because you have so much data across social media, all these platforms and stuff, he was like, you can tell to a pretty statistically significant confidence interval that like when these behaviors are happening and then six months later, they change their relationship status. Like we can go back and say, these were the predictors for, mm, yeah, isn't yeah. that crazy? That's yeah. wild. And so he yeah. said, you can start selecting people that are in that risk category. They're, they're, they're doing behaviors that statistically show that these are people that might be at risk for a divorce or separation. And you can target them and then start like advertising to them with Facebook ads mm. for like, marriage enrichment yeah. uh, like content or skills based content or all this yeah. stuff and that's actually really cool it's crazy i mean they're using it for good it's really good yeah. yeah but like imagine what someone could be using it for for like bad you know like imagine someone predicting something and doing the opposite or doing right. something it's just crazy yeah. oh for sure and that's and that's yeah i mean that's all the, that documentary is about is like they call them the persuadable so they're like how do we get the people in the swing states to you know not vote for hillary so yeah yeah, crazy times. All right, well, thanks for coming on, guys. Yeah. Is yeah. there anything else we wanted to talk about? No, no, no. I feel like we're good. No, we're good. I mean, yeah. did you have any, like, yeah, segments or whatever? You have any do you want to try to do, Ty, do you want to try to do the current events? Okay, let's try let's to pull up the shot. current events. Yeah. All right. Shout out to Ty, who's doing our, who's doing our closet production. And um, we're going to pull up some current events here. Oh, oh, you Should did. Okay, I'll check. Oh, and let's see if we have My any questions. For a note from Sally Beans. How are we doing on time here? Um, I have no idea what time we're starting. Okay. You should... It's um, 11.46. Oh, no. no, I'm saying, like, are we good on time? Or are we... Corey. Oh, like it's us? Oh, we're fine, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Let me see if we got any questions for oh. us. Oh, the, the, the bags are recyclable, but not... Biodegradable. Oh, uh, my Joseph bad. slash Jonathan slash <laughs> Jarek wanted me to tell you that. So you can't eat them. You can't eat them. You can't biodegrade them, but you can recycle them. Okay. <clears throat> um, this is some art that I came across on the internet. And um, this segment of the show is called Sell It. And so, Eric, if you could just like... Oh, convince <laughs> us this is good art. So ah. it's a lot of Mary. Oh my gosh, Maria. <laughs> it's a lot of really weird do Mary I to, related. Do I, is that keep the, scrolling down. Keep scrolling down to some was, of the other ones. Yeah, please do. Oh my gosh. Ah. Super Mario. So it's ah. Super Mario Mary. <laughs> it's really strange. You, so you want me to. S uh, not that one. Keep no. going. Keep going. What? That's not. Uh, keep going. The there's some out? really. If you go down, there's like some space. Mary ones. Okay. Oh, so yeah. maybe the segment should be called "Is this oh, sacrilegious?" Ah! Is this sacrilegious? Right? It's like, uh, oh, yeah, that's creepy. That's pretty sacrilegious. Are we watching oh, it? I don't want to watch it. No. Oh. Ah. Okay. Go down. Wait. Wait. Keep going. Go down a little farther. Is that a Power, the Power Rangers? Rangers? Well, some of them I was like, <laughs> oh my. Okay. Go. Go. Go further. Keep going. Keep going. Go down. Down. She's down. reading a book. Go down. Go down. The Super Mary. Super. <laughs> Hello. Keep, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. How did you? What did you? How did you find this? Keep going. Keep going. I don't know. Someone posted it. It's all. All Mary though. It's like is it good? He's really keep going, keep going. There's one. Does he like Mary or not? Like uh right. Oh, oh wait, up, up, up. 
This is Dragon Ball Z, Mary. Oh my god. <laughs> Goku. Whoa. This is definitely sacrilegious, just to be yeah, clear here. But this... it's very strange. Uh, this is rock star, Mary. <laughs> okay. But I'm like, what she is... Does this rock. is oh, so she, she, she strange. She can't be a snake. No. So, Eric, I mean... <laughs> Rapunzel. Don't make me do this. <laughs> if I were to buy one of these don't, and send it to you... Don't keep going down. Do Let's go down more. Sailor Moon. It? There was a Sailor Moon, Mary. Don't make me do this. Power Rangers. Hello Kitty, Mary. <laughs> the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> My Little Pony. Statue of Liberty, Mary. <laughs> there, is this all Mary? I don't know. This artist is like, what? It, like, why? Oh, this is like a... Poly, a Polly Pocket. Polly Pocket, Mary. Not that I've ever had one. Uh, yeah. Isn't that strange? This is like the it's weirdest. This is like the cursed internet. I kinda. don't. I, this makes me uncomfortable. Is, she a she is, a trend. is this really? Is oh, that's like the cat. Yeah. Oh, really? What? What's it's the trend? I don't know oh, what is it? So don't tear down a statue. Redo it as anime. Oh, yeah, this is so strange. This really. So, <laughs> so what's the goal here? What? Do, so uh, we we look at these and we. We feel uncomfortable. I just saw that on social media, Eric. You said that you love stuff like this, and it should, we should have more of this. Pikachu. I think that was a that was not me. That's a different Eric. Isn't this crazy? Oh, oh my gosh! I couldn't tell if this was upsetting, offensive, or it's just confusing. Yeah, it's yeah. just confusing. It's, it's definitely it's definitely s- sacrilegious. Some of, yeah, some of it's just really really upsetting. Also, yeah. Um, so maybe I shouldn't have. Yeah, put this I, as no, a that's okay. Current event. I just, but I just wanted. Us I don't to think I could this. sell it. I don't yeah. think I could do that. <laughs> I'm mean, so sorry. Maybe the teddy bear one is that? Is the I one, don't know. It's was just that, so strange. that wasn't Mary, was it? I mean, I is she making these by I, hand? Like I that's guess. pretty impressive. But it's like, why the obsession French with artists work from bless- Mary? Damaged statues work from bless. So she takes. Oh, so damage. she takes damaged statues, and I don't know. It's weird. Okay, so no one go to that Instagram account. What's, what else we got? Okay. What else we got here? Oh, this is... You, so you saw the blast yeah, in Beirut. Yeah. So unmute it. This is 20 seconds of during mass, right when the blast goes off. Watch this. This is crazy. So the first shockwave comes, knocks out all the power. He's like... Run. Oh, no! Isn't that crazy? Is he okay? Do we know? I think he was okay. Dude. Isn't that wild? If, and I, then, w- if I was in mass and the roof caved in. I know, right? Like, I don't know how I would. trip me up so bad. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so anyways, I thought that was wild that someone had footage of like a live stream during mass. Have you seen the the explosion? Yeah, it's crazy. That's wild. That's wild. wild. It's very wild. wild. So. Like the girl in the wedding dress. She's having her wedding photo no During way. the oh, that one, this one yeah. right here. Click yeah. it. Did you see that? <gasps> Thirty seconds. Oh my gosh! Oh, it's a drone right in front of her. That's kind of strange. Or is it just oh a my gimbal? gosh! I would not let a drone that close to me. Is uh-huh. it a gimbal? It was it's moving weird, gimbal. like a drone. That's so crazy. Whoa. Those poor people in Met Beirut. That's crazy. Yeah. Holy moly. All right. Uh, next, uh, next we got, I just, I, I don't know why I just, uh, oh, this is a weird. <laughs> what is this? We went from something really crazy to something stupid. Uh, I found this online. This is a sculpture. What? Where it's like a, it's like a wind generated monster. <laughs> yeah. So this is wind powered wooden beach what? monster. Isn't that wild? Dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It looks just like that. (laughs) This guy was just really good at that game. Oh, my (laughs) gosh. How long must have that Look at that centipede thing. And it's wind-powered. Yeah. I don't know. I just think this is the future of our world. Yeah. Well, yeah, if we could get a wind-powered car going, that'd be nice. Well, yes, no, I a, just think these. I think we need more wind-powered oh, just more centipedes. Of these. Yeah, for for to look at. Okay. What else we got? Yeah, what else do we have? Oh, we have this UFO sighting. Oh, what? Oh, yeah. I believe. Okay. So, a, mis- <laughs> a, mystery, a mysterious <laughs> UFO over Boston. Um, this was filmed through an aircraft window. They're here. As it passed over Boston, Massachusetts. So, click play on the video. Totally here. This video was caught by New Hampshire resident 
Oh, <gasps> big screen. I so, so I just wanted to get your take as experts. Do you on, believe? I'm pretty close to believing. Yes. Have you seen the? You've seen the? Um, yeah, Netflix documentary. No. Oh, what? And then they, and What's the guy, called? the guy was on Joe Rogan. It's called. Um, Is it the Fire Pilots or the or Bob oh, Lazar? Some of those are, yeah, Bob Lazar. There's a Netflix documentary. Look at this weird thing. Whoa. Does it, does it maneuver weird? It's just kind of hovering. Oh, well, is it another airplane about to land? No, it's just a white it could be a disc. Plane. It looks like a white disc. Frisbee. Oh, yeah. Someone just tossed a frisbee. Up in the air and it's hovering there? No, it does look weird. Okay, bomb. So they just don't know what that is? Unidentified. Yeah, it's unidentified. Wow. Okay, so the next Netflix documentary that you guys should watch, Area 51 and Flying Saucers. Okay, with it's Bob a really Lazar. yeah with Bob Lazar. It's a really. I did good. see a video of the ex prime minister of Canada talking about like aliens, like how he saw them and blah blah blah. And it's crazy, it was yeah. nuts. If you if you if YouTube it, you can see that. And it's well, like, all these articles dude, coming out that the government is In is life. investigating, um, is investigating unidentified flying objects. And like one of the things is, well, maybe it's just drones from other countries. Yeah. Like we don't know. Like it just means unidentified. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of weird, strange things going on with. Well, didn't someone come up with something that said like the, the government admitting like, yeah, this tech is not from this world or something like that? Yeah, there was a yeah there was a um, government official that said that yeah we're pretty sure we have some materials that don't seem to be made by humans that seem to be mm. Isn't that crazy. Yeah. What would that do to your faith, your Catholic faith? Increase it. Anything. It would increase it if yes. if there were aliens on other planets. Absolutely. That would <laughs> that would increase your faith. Yes. Have you heard that, that would, theory that oh, that Noah's the yeah. story of Noah's Ark was about like aliens? us? No, uh, it was about us humanity leaving Mars, Mars. for Earth. <gasps> like the yeah. Ark was a ship. The flood happened on Mars. There was water found, or on evidence Mars? of water on. Uh, there was evidence of water found on Mars. No, I'm not. Heard and of this. possibility for biological life. And yeah, it totally makes sense. Yeah, Noah's Ark was. And a Mars ship. is a smaller planet than Earth. Yeah, uh, so it's uh, a little bit easier to kind of like just walk the distance of Mars yeah. than Earth. Is it really? I don't know. I'm Which just agreeing smaller, with right? you. <laughs> You're very convincing. I don't know. Yeah, I could see that. <laughs> That's all we got. That's all we got for today. Is there all anything right. else you guys want to shout out as we as we close this out? <coughs> this has been a four hour podcast. What? Yeah, the coffee's good. I liked it. Good. Yeah, I oh. liked it. Jelly beans is great. I want it. So we're gonna yeah. do a review where we good. actually blend the beans and we yeah. steep it and we do it good. I don't know if I did this right. I don't know how much water I put in here, but I liked it. Great. I mean, it was good. Uh, it's the first time I've ever had steeped coffee. Yeah, I, I would say. Uh, Joseph, if you could move into the, the tea region, I know you're doing a lot with coffee, but for us tea drinkers, I would drink some Zelly tea, just saying. I know yeah. you have the tea bags available because of the coffee that we had. So if you could just put some tea leaves in what there. Types of, what types of blends of tea oh, are you what into? Types am chamomile, I chamomile, black, Earl chai, Grey, Earl Grey chai. Lady Grey. I mean, we could go. Wow. I, we could go on. Okay, but I, mean, do you I, want I won't. Talk about the songs that we did on your show. Oh right, yeah, let's we talk did about songs. that. We can we can end with that. Let's do that. Okay. All right. Okay. Tell them about chromatic. All right. So you guys, we'll have uh, some edited videos that'll be available on YouTube. Yeah. Of you guys performing some songs here. Absolutely. And the first one was. Chromatic. Chromatic. Yeah. So that's the title track of the album. It's the titular uh, track. Yes. I don't. I guess so. I need a dictionary or a thesaurus at this moment. But the first track, for sure, I can say that with certainty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, no. Um, but, yeah, the, the story the story that Will was talking about, um, that's kind of the, the meaning of the song. It's, it's this experience of someone who has encountered, uh, encountered uh, a person that has allowed them to to see in a new way, and more specifically for me, it's it's that that realization and looking at this chromatic color wheel, seeing every spectrum of color, realizing that when I'm anxious or worried, I'm only seeing one one uh, hue of color, um, and that that God sees everything. He sees outside of space and time. He sees the entire picture, and when we when we pray, when we connect ourselves with Him. We allow ourselves to enter into that vision, that that bigger picture uh, vision, 
that then usually brings us outside of ourselves and brings us away from our anxiety, our worry, our stress. And we realize that getting outside of ourselves, we see there's, there's more than we thought. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's kind of the, the heart behind that song. It's, it's very upbeat and driving, but, um, it has uh, a lot more meaning to it. So awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And what were were the two other songs? Um, the other two, so we, then we played stay, um, which is just kind of like this cool kind of eighties vibe, like kind of, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It's just a really cool pop eighties song. Um, and that one lyrically just kind of dives into like the desire for us to, um, you know, well, it's kind of written as like this kind of like, oh, won't you stay, you know, never leave my side kind of a thing. And we can all kind of relate to that, uh, wanting relationships and wanting to be with a man or a woman who, who we would like to yeah. not break up with us or anything. But, yeah. um, but there's a lot of kind of depth behind some of those lyrics, especially in the bridge, just kind of talking about, um, you know, once in a while we kind of look for things and, and eventually our search leads us back to, to God, hopefully. Right. Um, and, uh, but yeah, so, um, that's that one. And then the last song we did was origin, which was a song, um, that we wrote with our friend Greg Boudreaux, um, who's just a wordsmith and a beautiful man, beautiful voice. And, mm, wow. um, we high praise. Yeah. Oh yeah. So we it's basically sounded. for that song, you know, I, I took it to these guys and I was like, look, I, I have this song idea. I want it to be called origin and kind of talk about like the origin of, who we are and how like God created us out of love. And so it is a love song and it's very like when we were writing it, Greg was like, man, this, this just needs to be the part of the concert where you just tell people to buddy up and slow dance, you know, cause it's like, yeah. you know, six, eight, super slow, big drums, but you know, have you done that? Um, Not well, yet. no, but I mean, me and my wife danced to it at our wedding. Um, yeah, it was your first dance. It's our first dance, mm-hmm. Eric, Eric and, uh, Corey performed it for us, it's but, um, but like hot. the, hot. the vibe, yeah, it, it was. Hot. So the vibe of that one is very like, kind of like 80s synth, um, kind of like, we just want it to literally feel like you're, you know, it was your parents or grandparents had a sock hop mm. slow dancing. So wow. and we're going to have a, even a, hotter. A, a saxophone solo or something. <gasps> in it. Yeah. Oh, that would be great. Yes. Oh, good. yeah, yeah. John Mark good. McMillan on it. Yeah. Mm. Throw that sax Sultry, in there. baby. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the rest of the songs are pretty cool. So, we didn't mention this. For all the music nerds out there, um, chromatic, obviously, there's a chromatic scale, which is all 12 notes that exist mm-hmm. in music. And so, every song is in a different key. So, there's 12 songs, and they walk up the chromatic scale. Right. Yeah. I, I was like, <coughs> it would be really cool. So, as we're having this, as I'm having this, like, idea for this concept of, of this song, yeah, like realizing the ambiguity of that word chromatic and, and allowing for a challenge musically. I was like, I feel like there's some, there's some musicians that I've listened to that I'm like, they just sing in the exact same key for every song and they, they don't change anything. And I'm mm-hmm. like, man, that'd be really cool to, to push ourselves and be like, can we fit this into the structure of like moving up each note chromatically throughout the album? Mm-hmm. So it really wow. is like a full take that Chris Tomlin. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Looking at you, key of A. Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> key, of, key of B flat. Yeah, for exactly. You're starting recording ever. on soon? Or Tom- uh, we're going to the studio to the, yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow as of this day recording. And people know, can still really support you guys. Mm-hmm. Our crowdfund will be up for a while. So Awesome. Um, but yeah, so we'll be in the studio for two weeks. Uh, our Instagram is at novum underscore music. Our website is novamusic.co. Uh, our people rec- can just search Novum and type in a word after that and probably find <laughs> something you guys are doing. Yeah, one, of the, one of the many Co. branches. Diversity, you know. Yeah, and, exactly. You NovumRecords.com. Novum Realty. Novum. Yeah. That's Realty. coming. My wife started Novum.Creations on Instagram. Oh, yeah. So she's making cool stuff. That's cool. Um, so. but, uh, but yeah, no, we're super excited. We already, I mean, the, the title track, Chromatic, is already out on Spotify. We did that a year ago. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Um, so you can go rock your socks off to that. Awesome, man. Well, thanks for coming in. Thanks for performing. I hope to get those videos up soon. Um, yeah. What we normally do is, as Ty is pulling up the music, Eric, if you can just if you can just say something to your mom. Yeah. You, you just look into the camera right there. Yeah. Will and I will leave, and you'll just say something, that whatever you want to say to your mom. Thanks right. for coming, guys. Support the show at patreon.com slash the show, and find merch. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. Mom, it's me again. I know we've talked a lot throughout the course of my life, but there's something that I need to tell you now. Thank you. Thank you for giving me life. 
Thank you for picking up my Cheerios and wiping off my boogers. Thank you for being my mom. <laughs>